Ho ho ho! Here's Santa Claus again and I welcome you to my new SQL Server Quickie. Today I'm sitting here in a Boeing 737-800 cockpit and we are heading together over to Hackathon Island. I have replaced my good old reindeers to a commercial airliner because we have to be wicked fast to reach Hackathon Island on time. After we have reached our cruising altitude, I will switch on the autopilot and I will then dock about hash indexes in in-memory OLTP that is part of the upcoming SQL Server 2014 release. In-memory OLTP is everything about improving performance and reducing latency times for your database queries. For that reason, SQL Server 2014 implements completely new data structures in the storage engine, hash indexes and so-called BW trees. One very important differentiation over traditional BW structures is the fact that these new data structures are completely log and latch free, means you can concurrently read and write to these structures without introducing any blocking anymore. Sounds interesting to you? So join me on this short flight to Hackathon Island. But before we start, please stow your carry-on luggage underneath the seat in front of you or in an overhead bin. Please take your seat and fasten your seat belt. Also make sure that your seat is in the fully upright position and that your tray table is in the full upright position. At this time, we request that all mobile phones are completely switched off or put into flight mode. We also remind you that this is a non-smoking flight. Smoking in the laboratory is prohibited and may activate the fire alarm. If you have any further questions about our flight today, please don't hesitate to contact one of our one of our very nice flight attendants. Thank you. Cabin crew, prepare for takeoff. Takeoff power set. We have now leveled off at our cruising altitude. I have activated the autopilot, which means in the meantime I have now some time to show you on the flip chart the underlying architecture of hash indexes in SQL Server 2014. As I've already said earlier in the introduction, a hash index is stored internally as a hash table. When we are creating a hash index, you have to specify the amount of hash buckets that you want to have. Imagine here we have here our hash table and here we have multiple hash buckets. The most important thing here, you have to define the number of hash buckets during the index creation itself if you want to change later the number of hash buckets you want to have you have to drop and recreate your table. Imagine now we have created our hash index on a column name. And we have specified, let's say, 26 hash buckets. In our case, we have here the first hash bucket, second one, third, fourth, until we hit 26 hash buckets. Let's imagine now that we are inserting a record into that hash index. Assume we are inserting our good old friend Adam, mechanic, 
into that hash index. As soon as we are inserting a record into a hash index, SQL Server applies a hash function, and the hash function defines in which hash bucket that record is stored. Assume now in our case we are using a very simplified hash function, we are just determining with the first letter in which hash bucket our record is stored. So in our case, A is stored in the first hash bucket, which means our first hash bucket has a record to that record. The next step, we are inserting another record, our friend print OSA. First letter is P, which means print goes into the second hash bucket. Very easy. Of course, you are asking now what happens when we are inserting a first record, like an Anthony, and that value of the key hashes to the same hash bucket. In that case, we have a so-called hash collision. Hash collisions are very, very bad regarding performance because what SQL Server is doing, our first record, Adam, binds to our second record, Anthony. Means we're introducing CPU overhead during the insertion of that record, and we're also introducing overhead when we're reading from that hash index because in that case, SQL Server has to follow that linked list. Of course, you can say, let's create a hash index with a huge amount of hash buckets so that we can avoid hash collisions. That's also a bad idea because in that case, you create a hash index with a huge amount of hash buckets, means when not all your hash buckets are full, you are wasting memory. When you are scanning your hash index, SQL Server has to scan empty hash buckets. So the recommendation for the number of hash buckets is the number of distinct values that you have in that key column on which you have defined your hash index. So again, you have to know your data, you have to know your workload that is executing against SQL Server. So as everything in SQL Server, it really depends on your data, on your data distribution. Let's see what happens now when, you're, when we are changing a record. As you can see, our print OSA is in reality a print OSA. So I've had, I have here a typo. So I'm now changing the last name of print to print OSA. In that case, again, we can see P means the old version of print is just terminated, means SQL Server sets the corresponding end timestamp, inserts a new record, a new version, and the old version just points to the new version, and the new version has a corresponding start time and an end time of infinity, means this is now our current record. So you can see, again, we have in one hash bucket two records because we have multiple versions. Because of that versioning strategy, Hackathon is completely lock and latch free, means we can concurrently read and write in that hash index. Of course, at some point in time, no other transactions are referencing that invalid version of that record anymore, which means the garbage collector of Hackathon kicks in and just frees up that version and now the new current version just points to the corresponding hash bucket. As you can see, that's the basic concept of hash indexes that are part of SQL Server 2014. So let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio, where we will create a simple hash index and I will show you the performance implications when you are choosing a wrong number of hash buckets. The first step, I'm creating here a new database. To be able to use the new in-memory stuff in SQL Server 2014, you have to add an additional file group that stores our in-memory optimized data. 
SQL Server is using here for that case the file stream functionality that was introduced back with SQL Server 2008. After we have created the database, we create a file stream container in the previous created file group. Now we are able to create a new simple table. As you can see from the table definition, we are telling SQL Server that we want to have that table stored in memory and that we only want to have a schema durability. In our case, this means that we are losing our data as soon as we are stopping and restarting SQL Server. This makes only sense when you are able to recreate your lost data like an ETL process for loading your data warehouse. I am using here a schema only durability to get rid of any disk interaction so that I can show you the impact of hash collisions in the underlying hash table used by Hackathon. As you can also see, I have defined a hash index on the first column with a specific hash bucket count. In my case, I'm just creating here 1000 hash buckets. In the next step, I am creating a simple native compiled stored procedure which inserts 1 million rows into the previous created table. This means that we are getting here a huge amount of hash collisions because every hash bucket finally contains around 1000 rows. That's very bad for the performance as you will see shortly. When we now execute that stored procedure, it runs for some seconds. I thought in memory OLTP is wicked fast. Not really. The performance dropped down here because of the hash collisions we have created. We can query now the DMV, SysDMDB, XDB hash index stats to find out how many hash collisions we have on average. As you can see from the column average chain length, we have around 1000 pointers to rows in every hash bucket. So let's drop and recreate our table with about 1 million of hash buckets so that we have now no hash collisions. When we now rerun the same native compiled stored procedure, you can see that it completes under a second. That's a huge difference to previews. When we check the number of hash collisions again through the previous mentioned DMV, you can also see that there are no hash collisions anymore. As you can see from this simple demonstration, you really have to carefully choose the number of hash buckets you want to have in your hash index. If they are too low, you will have really huge problems with your performance. Green. Approaching minimums. Two hundred minimums. Contact continue. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hackathon Island. Local time is 3 p.m. in the evening and the temperature is minus 5 centigrade. On behalf of the entire crew and on behalf of Signal National Airline, we say thank you for joining us on this flight and we are looking forward to see you in the very near future on another flight. Enjoy the rest of your day. So thanks for watching this SQL Server Quickie where I've introduced hash indexes in SQL Server 2014 to you. I hope that I have given you very good understanding 
about how hash indexes are working internally and what are the implications regarding performance when you are choosing the wrong hash bucket count. If you want to have further information about Hackathon, I highly recommend to read my web blog at thesequelpassion.at where I'm blogging regularly about Hackathon and other performance related stuff in SQL Server. So, I wish you and your family a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and see you next year. Thank you!